two weeks before this all happened, I had just watched your show on Unscripted Saints. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that is the coolest story ever. And so then I started following your podcast. And like five days later, my friend was like, oh my gosh, have you guys heard this podcast? It's so good. I'm like, oh my gosh, yes, I love it so much. That is awesome. Well, it's meant to be. I I yeah. think that um the whole like how I met my husband, his whole background, his whole baseball story with all of that. Like he, it's just like, it's crazy how like all of those challenges that we went through, it's like been like a gift almost. Like we can, like we can see how much our lives have changed and to be able to be a witness of such change is like such a gift. And so yeah. it's crazy how like all those crazy things that happened, they like have come full circle now. So isn't that so cool? It it is cool. But um your your friend that reached out, she told me that your story is amazing. And I actually am I ha- have a few questions for you once we get to the end that were actually submitted by um, some listeners. And so I'm okay. excited to their new questions. I have kind of the same questions that I asked every time, but these are some new ones that are specifically for your scenario. So, uh, cool. yeah, I'm excited, um, to just hear all the things. So if you want to start from the beginning, then yeah, that'd be awesome. Okay. All right. So, um, I'll just kind of start from the beginning. So there's kind of a kind of know my life before all of this happened but um so first I guess I'm a mom I have four boys they are so fun um my oldest Kai he's nine and then Jace is seven Hawk is five and Gray is one so lots of boys in the house they're super fun um my husband and I have known each other like our whole lives so we dated in high school high school sweethearts and we've almost, it'll be 13 years that we've been married like next week. So kind of crazy. Um, we both grew up in North Ogden, Utah. Um, we still, we live in Pleasant View, which is just kind of right there, but our families are both really close by and we love that. It's pretty awesome to have families nearby and stuff. But, um, anyway, I, I grew up in the church and, um, my family, we were active, but we weren't like just gung-ho about everything you know like church was never like forced or anything I mean they encouraged us to go my parents um I'm the oldest of three kids I have a younger sister and a younger brother um I love my family amazing parents just so loving and honestly I can say I never felt like like um I guess the word might be rebellious towards the church just because I was always forced it really was like yeah, I think you should go. And I mean, they probably were disappointed on the times I didn't go, but it was never like a, a forced thing. And looking back, I'm so grateful that it was always my choice. Mm -hmm. Um, I've always been like a rule follower and don't like to ruffle feathers. I, like I said, I love my parents and I always wanted to make them proud of me and just do what they wanted me to do. Um, and I never minded going to church. I just kind of like went just to go. I wouldn't say I was ever the person that was like doing things to build my testimony and just doing all these extra things. I just went and yeah, honestly, just kind of go with the flow, just kind of there and come home and didn't really think about church until next Sunday. Um, <clears throat> and I, I don't know that I ever like had some amazing moment where I just felt the spirit as like when I was younger, except, um, it's not called EFY now. I think it's it's FSA that they call it now. Um, so I went to EFY, I think. Oh, FSY. Yeah. (laughs) Actually, I don't really know. So (laughs) I can't, it's called something else, but it used to be called EFY and you'd go for like four or five days or something. And I went to that when I was 14 with some friends and it was such a spiritual experience for me. It was like the first time that I really, like listened and I think it helped that it was it wasn't like older teachers they were young adults and I felt more connected with what they were saying and I just felt the spirit so strong there and I remember coming home and like 
almost being discouraged, like, oh my gosh, how do I keep up this feeling? And I didn't go on a mission, so I don't know, but I feel like I hear a lot of missionaries say when they come home, it's a hard adjustment to be on such a spiritual high and then come home and be like, man, this is the real world. How do you go on, you know? And I remember thinking that after I got home from EFY, like, man, this is like, I just want to stay there. I just want to feel this feeling all the time. Um, And I think that was a good time in my life to feel that. I was in ninth grade and it was just really good. Um, I enjoyed seminary, junior high and high school. I had lots of friends that were kind of had the same interests. And so it was just kind of easy, you know, again, I wasn't at this point really doing anything to deepen my testimony. It was just um, kind of how Utah culture is, I guess. It's just the norm. And um, I just kind of went with it. But um, I feel like when I started just kind of not even drift away, but just put a lot less effort in, um, started in high school, I was involved in drill team and and if you're involved in anything in high school, it's hard to do anything extra. You know, there's like practice after school, before school. And so that was kind of my out of like, oh, I don't want to go to mutual today. I just finally have a break or I didn't have a break. And I just missed a lot of things. And I feel like that's kind of where I started to just easily make excuses to not go to the activities. And it was easier to sleep in on Sunday mornings. And I would still go, but I just, like, as I was thinking about kind of my journey, I feel like that's when <clears throat> I kind of started to not put the effort in that I should have. After high school, I think, um, like, kind of leaving your bubble of all the things that you're familiar with and people you're familiar with, I just started hearing things about the church that I was like, man, I have never heard that before. I don't know how I feel about that. Just, like, all the common questions and opinions and things that you hear all the time now but at that time I was like oh my gosh like that's kind of a good question I don't know the answer to that and I've never heard that and it just was like unsettling you know when you grow up learning something your whole life and then you hear something that is like I guess that's not that far-fetched and it just is kind of like rattles your world a little bit and so I didn't like stop going to church but I did a lot of those questions I was like man, I really don't know. Like, that's a tough question. And it's kind of hard to swallow if you don't like have something to say, no, that's incorrect. Here's the definite answer, you know? And so I was just kind of in that place, like, yeah, I'll go. But I, again, like not really any connection, just going because, because that's what you do. Like all my friends were going, my family was still going. And so I just kind of went. So my husband and I, it's kind of a cute story. So I feel like I have to tell it, but, um, like I said, we've known each other our whole lives and we were actually in the same first grade class together. And, um, my mom, when we got married, I was going through all of our photos and stuff to put together like a photo montage or whatever. And my mom was like, you will not believe what I found. And in first grade, our teacher had everyone in the class, write Like something nice about the birthday person. And then she made a book of it and you could keep it and stuff. <clears throat> and in that book, my husband wrote this little like love poem and like the roses are red, violets are blue. And then he's like, love your secret admire. And then he put his name, Cole. <laughs> and so it was so cute to like go back and see that. And I totally forgot. I didn't even know. So that was kind of a fun thing. That's so um, cute. Yeah, it was kind of fun to come across. But anyway, so we'd known each other for a long time and we started dating our junior year in high school. And um, right after high school, he got drafted to play baseball for the New York Mets in the minor leagues. And so he, right after high school, I want to say like two weeks, right after we graduated, he went to Florida. That's where the minor league team was. And he was there for like six months or whatever. So he would go do that. And I was going to school at UVU um, at that time. So he'd be gone for like six months and then be home for six months. And we stayed together, but it was kind of hard. And um, I don't know, it's just kind of a weird time in life too. You're just like thrown out into the world and you're just trying to figure so many things out. And anyway, he did that for like five years and then he actually had to get uh, shoulder surgery. He was a pitcher. And so- Oh my, my husband 
feels with literally, I'm not kidding you. Like one hour ago, he was like, I'm getting so, so, shoulder surgery in the fall. He's already had it once. And that oh, actually no. took him down his path of drugs was his shoulder. And he obviously from his baseball days, yeah. so that's crazy. But anyway, sorry to interrupt. Yeah. No, you're fine. Yeah. He, those surgeries, they're no joke. And it just, he kind of wasn't the same after that, like able to throw the same. And so um, after that he was done. Anyway, so that was a cool experience. I actually, I was able to go out and see him and see the field and all that stuff. And it was pretty cool. At this point, I still just wasn't, I was just randomly going to church and kind of like, I wouldn't say I was inactive, but I like was rarely going, not going that often at all. Um, and then we, so we uh, got married in 2010. Um, and we decided not to get married in the temple. Um, we went back and forth quite a bit because we dated for a long time and um, there like wasn't any like major pressure from our families, but it's kind of like that unsaid thing. Like no one really said like, you need to get married in the temple, but it was just like, we obviously knew that's what our parents wanted for each of us. So we, um, we talked about it and kind of went back and forth. And um, I guess I can't really speak for my husband, but in my mind, I was like, you know, I just still feel so unsettled about these questions. And I wouldn't say I was like, I was ever anti the church, but there were things that made me not want to be all in. I just was like, I just don't know about this. And I still like respected the church and people that wanted to get married in the temple and things. So I was like, I am not, it just feels so un unauthentic for me to push for this thing to get married in the temple that I just don't feel is genuine for me right now. If I'm going to make a commitment like that, I want to be all in. I want to do it for the right reasons. And so because of that, we're like, you know what, now is not the time. We're just, we're not going to do it. And and it was fine. Like our families were so supportive and there was no, there were no issues. Um, I think deep down though, I was kind of like, man, I, I wish I could get to that place. Like I wanted to be there. I just wasn't. Um, so I, I still, to this day, I feel good about our decision. And I mean, you know, things happen the way they're supposed to. And sometimes you can't tell until long ways down the road, but um, anyway, so we didn't get married in the temple. And I feel like gradually after that, my heart hardened more and more towards the church. And I think it was because I, um, and I, looking back, I know none of these people meant like to be insensitive or not very thoughtful in what they're saying. But like when you're the person that is like not the norm of the culture, um, North Ogden, it's pretty small and kind of one of those places where everyone feels like they know everyone and kind of knows what's going on in everyone's life. And I think I was just feeling like I was, we were being judged because we didn't get married in the temple and both of our families are active, active members. And so it just kind of felt to me that we were being judged and we'd have people come and um, like invite us to church and kind of ask questions. And I, over the years, I almost would feel like offended, almost like, do you think I'm not happy just because I didn't get married in the temple? Like I'm perfectly happy. And, and I, again, I'm not saying these people thought that that was just my perception of it. And I was like, gosh, that is just not fair. That <laughs> people are just assuming that we're not happy and they need to come and save us and do all these things to, to help us be happy. It's like, no, we are perfectly happy. We're fine. Like just let it be, you know, and I do, I feel like some of your other guests you've had on have kind of had similar feelings and I don't know, it's probably just in my head, but uh, anyway, so I, I feel like over the years, I gradually became more distanced from the church just because of like, it started to feel like it was getting pushed on us. And I was like, this is a personal thing. Like, if I don't want it, I don't want it. And I just I need to be there and it, I didn't even really think about church at a lot of a lot of those years that we weren't going unless someone brought it up I really 
didn't think about it, didn't think I was like missing out on anything and like I am perfectly happy. If anything, I'm less stressed, like not having to worry about all the things that come with being an active member. And I was like, man, I can like just chill on Sundays. I don't feel guilty about it. Like all these things that I was like, why do we put so much stress on ourselves? And again, it's, that's a choice, you know, it doesn't have anything to do with the church. That's a choice to, to feel those things. But I, I did, I felt like that for a long time. Occasionally I would go to church. I'd kind of get the itch. Like maybe I should just give it a try. Like we always had nice neighbors and um, we fix up a lot of houses and then sell them. So we moved quite a bit. And so every once in a while, I'd try to go for a few weeks and it just like didn't click. It's like, I would feel good when I was there, but then, um, my husband Cole, he didn't want to go. And so I'm like, this is just kind of creating this wedge that I don't like, like, I don't, I'm fine. I don't need to go. And he was never like telling me not to go. He was supportive. If I wanted to go, he just didn't want to go. And so I'd go a few times and then I wouldn't go for a long time. And I did that off and on. Um, and then I would say the first time I genuinely like started to think deeply about things was after I had my first son, Kai. And I think having a baby, especially your first, you just feel so close to heaven. Like, look at this little miracle, this little baby how like I don't want him to miss out on anything because of me and so I really started to think like do I should I go even if it's just for him like I don't want him to miss out on anything and so I would say that's when I first really deeply thought about it like I just love this baby so much and he's such a miracle and you just feel so close to heaven when you have a baby and I think you have a child. Yep. I have two. Oh. I can, I 100%. Yes. It's just the most beautiful experience ever. They're just literally angels. And so, um, that was when I really started to think deeply about things again. I, I wouldn't say I went, started going like when he was a baby, but as he got to like nursery age or sunbeam age, I was like, maybe we should have him go and just you know, the church doesn't teach anything bad. So I, maybe I'll just have him go and, you know, learn the things. And again, I'd try for a few weeks and it just never really clicked. And I kind of, I had the same feelings with my second son, Jace, and then my third son, Hawk. I just kept having this feeling like I, I feel like I need something more, if anything for them. Like, I don't know how I feel, but I just did not want them to miss out on something because of me. Like I said, I was never anti-church. I always believed in Christianity. It was more like our church, the LDS church specific questions that I just could not come to terms with. Um, so I was like, maybe it will just like start having our own lessons at home and I can teach them that there is more to life than just here and to know that there's a God and to know that there's life after this. And I don't know, I think just things going on with the world, I was feeling so anxious. Like I need to give my children something to be like hopeful for and something to hold on to in this crazy world. And I feel like it's only going to get crazier and I just want them to have something to hold on to. And so it was kind of a weird thing because Harry was wanting this for my kids, but I was still like on the fence about it. So looking back, I'm like, that is just strange. Obviously, I knew something was there because I wanted, I think I wanted it for my children. Um, anyway, so I was just on this fence for a long time and I started to feel anxiety a little bit. I think just, I mean, you know, with having children, you just want the very best for them. You want to protect them. You want to do all you can to just set them up the best way you possibly can as a parent. You just love them so much. Fast forward nine years and three kids later, um, I just finally was like, I, there is something like I need to fill this void. I don't know what it is. I still was feeling unsettled about the LDS church, but I was like, I know I believe in Jesus Christ. So I'm going to study the Bible. I'm going to go back and really look into the Bible stories and just see if I can find some answers there. Cause that is something 
I do still believe in, and I know that. So I started, um, I am by no means like a scripture person at all. <laughs> like I'm totally the person that is like reading the, all of the things that come with notes that can kind of explain. Me too. Me too. <laughs> I have to have that. Like, I don't know if I started reading all of the, I think it's, what's his name? Jeff Bridges, something Bridges. David, David, David Bridges. Bridges. I was literally had that on the tip of my tongue before you said it because I have the same ones. The same yes. Ones. Oh, they are so good. They're so I'm good. like, I'm sure it's good to read stuff on your own too, but at least for me, like I don't get all of those underlying messages right off the bat. Like I need someone to tell me and be like, oh, that is amazing. I never would have thought of that myself. <laughs> So um, anyway, I got like, it wasn't one of his books at this time, but um, I did find a book like that that just kind of had notes about all of the Bible stories. And I just remember thinking like, how have I never understood these until now? Like, these are so relatable to our times, like the basic, the symbolism of all the stories and the messages that are in there, like it is so relatable to our times now. And I was just blown away at like, oh, these are such good messages how am I this age and I've never like thought this deeply about it before how did I let this get through my fingers so I just I kind of became obsessed for a minute like just wanting to know more I just loved getting the deeper message and the symbolism in all of these stories and um another thing that I noticed and was humbling <laughs> was to recognize how many of like the unbelievers in the stories, like so many of their attitudes and thoughts and behaviors were things that I had had in my mind in ways that I had acted. And I was like, how did I get here? Like I am these people, I am, I'm so grateful. I've had such a blessed life. And how have I let my heart become so hardened towards, I don't even know why. Like I just, it was really eye opening for me to have literally read words from the Bible. And I'm like, I have had those exact thoughts. I was so like ashamed of myself here. I am thinking, trying to do all these things, but I had such a hardened heart and so much pride had gotten in the way of me just listening and like choosing to listen and learn. And so that was, that was like hard, but it was so good for me to read that. And self-reflect a little bit to be like man I I need to make some changes here because I am right in line with all of these like reading the story it's like it is so obvious you're making the wrong choice like how could they how could they make these choices it's so obvious but when it's in your real life it's like it just sneaks right in there you know it sneaks in to make different choices and it's always harder to make the better choice and so I that was like a really big turning point for me where I really started to have a softened heart so around the same time we had some neighbors move in next door they're from Washington and at first this is going to sound so rude but we're like oh they're from out of state like we're not going to feel judged and stuff you know because it's just you know I mean growing up in Utah it's just like a culture thing and no one means anything bad by it but it just kind of has a feel yeah. So we're like, oh, cool. Like people from out of state. Anyway, I was kind of embarrassed when we met them because here they are the new neighbors and they come over to our house to introduce themselves. And they were so nice. Like immediately before we even really knew them, like they told us their names. I was like, these people are just nice. They're so nice. Um, they had six kids. And I remember thinking like, oh my gosh, they look so young how do they have six kids they just they're just like the most beautiful people inside out I just love them so much but I like vividly remember that first time meeting them just feeling like they are just I don't know what it is about them I just am drawn to them they're just so nice um in that same conversation we learned they were members of the church of course when I heard that I'm like oh, here we go we're gonna have to tell them we're not active and I don't know just the whole spiel you know but um so we told them we were members but we were active and I was like relieved and like interested that they were not judgmental at all like I genuinely felt from them that they 
they wanted to be our friends, whether we were members or not. And not that I had ever felt the opposite from anyone, not that I ever felt that someone was like, I'm not going to be your friend because you're not active. But it just, they just felt so sincere. And I was just so impressed by that. Ever since then, like the more we got to know them, we had, so our oldest son was the same age as their youngest son. And so our kids played together all the time. And so um, I feel like we got to know them more just because we were communicating, like, can your kid come play and can they come over here, whatever. And so we talked often to them. And um, I just, the more I got to know them, the more I was just like, I just wanted to know more about them. Like how, why are they like this? Like they, I just want to be them. They are just the nicest people. And I know they have done financially really well in their lives. And I was another thing, this might sound so silly, but I was just so impressed by how humble they were. Like, I feel like it's so easy in this world to just want all the material things and to just want all the things. And these people, I know they could have had probably anything they wanted and they were just so humble. And it just impressed me so much because I feel like, especially if you're in the situation where you can buy and do all the things that you want to do, it's probably even harder to not do those things. Like it just really, they were just so different. Like I was just really impressed by everything about them. They, I learned that every single morning they got up and studied scriptures together as a family. And I had never done that in my family. And I was like, oh, how do you do that? Like, how do you get your whole family up before school? They had kids in high school, junior high and elementary. And every single morning they would get up and do scripture study. And I, it was just, I was so impressed with that. And I think another thing um, that I really loved about them. And again, I feel like I'm bashing on Utah culture a lot. I love living in Utah. I really do. Like it's okay. We've, al- we've always had so many nice neighbors and I love living in Utah. I think it was just during this time in my life when mm-hmm. I wasn't active, I just felt maybe hypersensitive to all of these things. Yeah. But yeah. Um, I do feel like sometimes, and another thing that uh, kind of made me feel like not super interested in the church is it does start because it is so common and it is the culture here. I feel I started to feel like, I feel like people just go for the social part. Like it just doesn't feel genuine sometimes. And so I kind of started to get that in my head. Like it, people just go because they want to make sure they look like they're going and they're being active, you know? And I'm like, I just don't want that. Like if I'm going to go, I'm going to go because I want to go. And mm-hmm. um, by seeing this family that moved in behind us, I was like, this is like, they truly go because they want to go. And they are living the gospel in every way because they want to, like, they don't know anyone here. They're not trying to impress anyone or trying to look a certain way. They like truly believe it. And they're doing all of these things. And I, it was just moving for me, like just watching them do all of these things. It made me just want to change my life. I'm like, these people just have it together. And I can feel that around them. I just, I love being around them. I love talking to them. I just loved everything about them. And so because of their example, like they, they never bugged us about church, anything, um, like nothing. They, it was just pure example that made me want to do more and change what I was doing in my life. And that was the first time that I was just like this. I just want to be like them. What do I need to do? to have what they have. And my life was happy. I'm not saying that I was in this unhappy place and I love my husband. I love my kids. We were very blessed. We had so many things that I'm so grateful for, but there was just this, this void. And I I don't really know how to explain it, but I was like, I just need something. And this family's example is honestly what made me like, I need to know, like, I need to know if I'm doing the right thing. So I I really started to dig deep in my religion search and my soul searching. I just, I still was on the fence about the church. Like, even though I love this family, I was like, I just, I still just don't know. Like no one can give me a direct answer to these questions. And I don't know how I feel about that because it's a big commitment if you want to 
like truly be an active member of the church. And so I still was just in that place. I want to say it was a couple months go by that I'm just still doing all this studying in the Bible and um, just observing and admiring this family. I'm just so impressed with everything about them. Um, I was like, I just need to know. I need to know if what I'm doing is the right thing. So I decided to say a prayer. And I remember even going to say the prayer. I'm like, what am I doing? Like, I haven't said a prayer in a long time. Like what? I don't know. I just, I think you become like, if you distance yourself long enough, it almost feels like, I don't even know what to do. Like, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to ask for. I don't feel worthy to ask for anything. Like, who am I to just say this prayer and ask for these things when I'm not doing anything to deserve it you know I kind of had those thoughts so I said this prayer and I I have said lots of prayers in my life and this was the first time that I wanted to just have an open heart and an open mind and I just asked Heavenly Father like please let me know if I am doing the right thing by trying to learn more about the church I want to do the right thing for my family I want to do the right thing for me. And I have a head full of really difficult questions and I don't want anything to get in the way of an answer. I feel like I need an answer that is undeniable because I just, like I said, I have all these hard questions that it's hard to have an open mind and an open heart when you have these really hard things going on in your head. So I remember being very emotional in my prayer and just wanting to be so honest, like, please just let me know an answer. And I don't want any, anything to get in the way of an answer. So I, I continue on this journey, still studying, still praying, thinking about it all the time, just like waiting. Am I going to get an answer? I don't even know. Just, you know, I kept thinking like, well, everyone always talks about how Joseph Smith just read that one scripture and he just went and asked. So I'm like, well, here we go. I guess we'll just give it a try. And anyway, it, um, I want to say it was not even two weeks later that I definitely got my answer. I had a grand mal seizure in my sleep and I've never had a seizure before in my life. So it was really traumatic. It was in the middle of the night. Um, my husband just heard me making these choking noises and he turned the light on and I was shaking. And I guess he didn't know this at the time, but I had bitten my tongue. And so there was blood coming out of my mouth, like really traumatic. And also our son, our oldest son had come in our bed in the middle of the night that night. So he was there and saw the whole thing. And it was just really traumatic. I don't remember anything about the seizure. I just remember waking up and my bed was just surrounded by all of these EMTs. I'm like, what is going on? Like, am I dreaming? Why are all these people in here? And Cole, he's like frantically getting dressed. And he's like, you just had a seizure. And I'm like, what? And I still, it just didn't really click. I was just, they were, the EMTs were asking me questions. And I'm like, I just do not know what's going on. This is weird. And Cole just kept telling me, you just had a seizure. They're going to take you to the hospital. I'm like, okay. And I felt fine at this point. Um, So I go down the hall and I see my son and remember that he came in our bed and I'm like, oh my gosh, he just saw this. And right from then, I just started sobbing. I felt horrible that he had to see that. And I just was a mess after that. I cried the whole way to the hospital and they, they took me in the ambulance just because we didn't, where I'd never had a seizure before. We're like, what is going on? I don't even know what just happened. I don't know if the EMTs actually even saw me having the seizure. They may have gotten there after. So they took me in an ambulance and I was just sobbing like uncontrollably the whole time. Just like, what is happening? My poor son just saw this. And the EMT was so sweet and nice. He just kept telling me like, it's going to be okay. We're going to take you to the hospital. And I mean, I was sobbing to the point I couldn't even hardly talk, except I do remember I just kept asking, what day is it? I was just so confused. What day is it? Are we really, are we in an ambulance? What, like, what day is it? And I just remember being like, feeling like I was in another world or something. It was weird. Anyway, it was just 
a really traumatic thing. And Did you find we, out what the what caused it or what? Well, yes, and I'll come back to that in just a minute. Okay. It wasn't there wasn't they didn't find anything at the hospital. They did like a CT scan and a bunch of tests, and they didn't see anything concerning. And so they gave me some medicine to take. Um, and one thing that was that made it hard too at this time was we were hoping to try for another baby. And I'm like, I am like 99% sure being on a seizure medication, you cannot be pregnant. And so that was like the first thing that popped in my head. Like, what is going on? Like, I don't know. It's just hard when I know everyone has their own hard things with fertility and things, but I feel like when you have that thought in your mind and there's something that's stopping you, it's, it's really a hard thing to process. And so I was just really stuck on that for a while. Like I can't have kids, any more kids now. And I was really sad about that. Anyway, so we get home and I really, I don't remember that much. I remember like the things I just talked about, but getting, I don't even remember getting home. I think I slept like the entire day after that. I just don't remember a lot about much after that, even like that whole week. I remember little things, but it was just a weird thing. Um, but I do remember the way that I felt after I was, I've never felt that way in my life. I was just completely overwhelmed with this feeling and I, I just couldn't stop crying. It wasn't like a sad cry. I was just so emotional. We had neighbors coming over some that I didn't even know. They were just bringing us meals and offering to drive because I couldn't drive if you have a seizure like that you can't drive for like six months so that was hard I had kids to get to and from school and you just don't realize how awesome it is to drive until you can't drive and we just had all these people coming to help me that I didn't know or I kind of knew but I'm like these people are so nice they're taking time out of their day to make a meal for me. They don't even know me. They're calling to check on me. And the, I could just feel that they genuinely were worried about me and wanted to help me. Every time someone came over, I would just get overcome with emotion. I could not keep it together. I'm like, what is going on? Like, is the medicine causing me to be emotional or what is going on? I just, I was just so overwhelmed with this feeling of gratitude just grateful to be alive. I was grateful for the EMTs that helped me. I was grateful for the doctors, for my parents that just without question came over to my house at four in the morning to watch my kids so I could go to the hospital. Just so much gratitude. And I I don't even, I couldn't find the words then and I still can't find the words. I don't know if there are words to describe the way that I felt. I just overwhelmed with emotion I just couldn't even keep it together for like weeks after but I I remember my dad would call me every day my mom would call me just calling to see and I remember one time my dad called me a few days after the seizure happened and I was just trying to explain this feeling to him I'm like dad I I don't know what is going on I just have so much gratitude but at the same time like how can I be feeling gratitude I just had this life-altering event I don't know why this happened I don't know if I have like some scary thing going on but I just feel so much gratitude and he was like I really think that is the spirit telling you that he's there with you and that you're on the right track and that very second I connected the dots like oh my gosh this was meant to happen I just prayed for an answer and in the weirdest way I don't know I still I can't explain how that would be an answer but it felt so real to me and ever since then I was like this is my answer overwhelmed with emotion and love and gratitude that's the only that doesn't even come close to how I felt but that's this kind of just sums it up I just felt so loved and so grateful and looking back I mean a few weeks later I was thinking about kind of the timeline of things that happened and during that time leading up to when I had that seizure I was going to start a new job at the hospital I had a friend that worked there and she's like it's a great mom job you can kind of pick your shifts and you could work through the night so you don't have to miss anything so that was kind of stressful because having kids it's hard to do anything extra you know and so I was going to do that and 
I thought about it and I was like, how weird is that? I, the day that I was supposed to start my first shift that night before is when I had a seizure. Mm -hmm. And so I couldn't work after that. I mean, I couldn't even drive. And when I thought about that, I'm like, how weird is that, that I have a seizure the day before I'm supposed to start a job. And, and I was like, I, honestly feel like that's a sign that at at least at this time in my life I shouldn't be working I need to be home and focusing on my children I could go on about all the little things but there were so many little things like that and I'm like that is not a coincidence what in the world you know again I just felt so grateful and I just for weeks I felt like I was on this spiritual high I just wanted to know all the things I wanted to learn more I wanted to just do all the things that I want to do. It was like an overnight change of heart, like instant. Looking back, I'm so grateful for that because I, I mean, I don't know where I'd be spiritually if that hadn't happened to me. And I don't think everyone has, you know, like an overnight, just drastic experience like that, where they do get an answer like that. And I'm so, so grateful that I was able, I feel like to get such a direct answer from him where it was within a week of that prayer that I remember saying and like kind of giving me this message that you need to be home with your children right now and now's not the time to be worrying about a job you know there's a reason that your neighbors moved in and had such an influence on you and you were kind of in this faith crisis and just all these things I was just flooded like I I didn't know how to process all the things that I wanted to because I was just so grateful. Another thing that I felt like it was just an answer, like straight from Heavenly Father was I, I felt like nothing else mattered. Like none of the material things that I worried about mattered. I was like, I don't care that I don't have the nicest car. I don't care that I don't have the nicest house. I'm just grateful to have a car. I'm grateful to have a home. I'm grateful for my beautiful children. I'm grateful for my husband. And I, I felt like it was such a good, like, reality check for me like what is important and that was so good for me like I my soul just needed that that was just another like confirming thing that that was my answer like these things that seem like such a big deal to me are not anymore I just I want to do everything I can to serve the savior like I that was another thought that kept going through my mind like how prideful was I I just felt so ashamed and so like regretful for the way that I was before just feeling all of these things and knowing that that he was there with me the whole time just waiting for me to make that choice to to turn to him and ask for help and turn to him to learn more and I just that was another thing I was overcome with was like, I just can't believe like he, I know I can feel that he loves me so much. How did I make him wait this long for me to turn to him and ask for help? And that's, I just barely put in a little effort and he gives me this answer. And I just felt so grateful for that. And so humbled by that, that he was willing to wait for me for all those years and even when I put in just the tiniest bit of effort, he'll still answer me and he still loves me. And that was such a humbling thought process to go through. And I'm grateful that I went through that because I, I feel like my love for the Savior just grew so much overnight. Because of that, I started to, I was like, I'm reading the Book of Mormon. I'd been a member of the church my whole life and I'd never read the Book of Mormon cover to cover. Um, and so this is when I bought the Book of Mormon made easier. Cause I'm like, I'm not yes. just reading it. I'm going to yes. read it and get yes. all the notes. Understand it. Yep. Yes. So I read the whole thing plus all those extra pages of notes. And I woke up every single morning and would read. I'd wake up as early as I could so I could get in as much time before my kids woke up. Cause I just was so driven and I have never been like that in my life about anything religion but I just wanted to do more so badly and I wanted to do anything he wanted me to do like heavenly father what do you want me to do I will do anything I just I just want to do more I feel I felt so guilty for missing out on all of those years of not doing everything I could for him and so this time was like I just 
what can I do? Let me learn more. Help me to learn more. I remember reading the Book of Mormon and there wasn't a page that went by that I wasn't, I couldn't feel the spirit. I'm like, this is true. I'm not even done with it. And I feel like this is true. I still don't have answers to those questions that I had, but I just feel like it is true. I would read things and I'm like, this is so relatable. Like all of this can be applied in my life. And again, I would read the stories, you know, the Lamanites or Laman and Lemuel and comments they'd make. And I would just be overcome with emotion. Like I was that. I mean, I was saying those things. I was thinking those things. How could I do that? You know? And so again, it was just so humbling to read the Book of Mormon and really like soak in the stories and the messages. And it was just really powerful to me to read it and to have those extra notes to kind of see the deeper message or maybe look at it from a different perspective than the way I would initially read it, you know? And it was so, it was just so good. And I, I read the whole thing, I want to say within a couple months. And I just, throughout the whole thing, I was just like, this is, this just feels true. And I remember thinking that, and I'm like, hey, people have always said this in the church. Like, you just know. And before I was like, how do you just know? Like, what does that mean? How, you can't just know. And then here I am reading the Book of Mormon, having these feelings. I'm like, this is how you know. Like, you just can't describe it. And I know I've listened to other guests on here that you've talked to, and they say the same thing. And it just is like, it's so meaningful and so powerful because when you hear someone talk about it and you've experienced it, it's like, I know that feeling there's no words and you still can't disprove things and you still can't answer certain questions, but there's that feeling that you just know, and it just feels so good. And I had that so often reading all the pages of the book of Mormon. I would have this conversation with my husband because he, I mean, he saw this whole transformation and I know that he knows that it's a genuine thing for me. Um, he still has certain questions about the church. And so occasionally we'd talk about it and I, I'm just being honest. And even still to this day, there's a lot of those questions that I'm like, yeah, that's a hard question. I, I really don't know, but I know the way that I feel. And I feel like if I denied that I would be lying and I would feel so guilty about that. Cause that feeling is something I will never deny or say it didn't happen. It was just too powerful and too too like unexplainable it was just amazing and and he's super respectful we we don't get like an argument so just ask and I'm like I really wish I had an answer I just don't it's just for some reason I just feel like it's the right thing to do um a few months later a member of the bishopric um called me and asked me to speak in sacrament and for anyone that knows me knows that is like my worst nightmare <laughs> like I really struggle. It's just like hard for me. I just don't like when everyone's looking at me, it's just stressful for me. So, um, but I remember thinking when he called, I was like, I've been waiting for this. Like I have wanted to express my gratitude to my ward family so much. And I want to share my story so much because I want them to know like your good example has an effect on people, whether you think it does or doesn't. Like I'm one of those people that your example, it changed my life. And so when he called, I didn't even hesitate. I'm like, yes, I will gladly speak. And the topic was <clears throat> um, on President Nelson's message of how do you hear him? And I'm like, how perfect is this? Like, this is exactly what I need. And I, it just fell in line so perfectly. And I just was obsessed. I think it was like one week's notice for the talk. And that whole week, I just was like, consumed with how do I articulate these things how do I say these things and express my gratitude to this amazing word and express the love that I have for my savior and just this like instant change of heart it was just like a miracle to me I'm like I don't know how to explain it but I was so grateful to be able to talk and kind of share my story and let them know how grateful I am and how Small acts of kindness are almost never small to the person receiving those acts of kindness. Even if it's just bringing over a plate of cookies, like that person remembers because it was just a thoughtful thing. Like, you know, thank you for thinking of me. So I was able to thank them and share my story. And 
it was just a really cool experience because there were some people in that ward that have known me my whole life and have kind of seen my journey. And so it was really special to me to be able to share. You know, I, I had this time in my life where I was questioning things and I've been able to experience this immense love and joy. And so I'm in a weird way grateful for that time that I was away. But it was just, it was awesome to be able to speak in church. Um, another thing looking back that was a miracle to me was that week in church that I spoke was the last week they had church in person and then COVID shut everything down. Oh my gosh. And I, I really didn't think about that until a few months later. I'm like, that is crazy. I mean, it was months that went by before the Bishop Rick asked me to speak. And like, what are the chances that that last Sunday is the one that I get to speak at? And oh I think... Heavenly Father knew that I just wanted so badly to share my story and to tell them thank you and how much I love them and appreciate them. We actually ended up moving before the churches opened back up to in-person church. So if I wouldn't have been able to give my talk that day, I never would have, we weren't in that ward anymore. And so I wouldn't have been able to do that. And that was another little miracle for me. Like I was just so grateful to be able to share that with these people who literally changed my life. I don't know. It's hard to say because I, I don't like still have answers, like I said before, but just that feeling is something I will never forget in my whole entire life. And it was just the most beautiful. I feel like I could totally relate to what they say in the scriptures, burning in the bosom. Like it was just powerful. Um, so yeah, that's kind of my conversion story. And it just has changed my life. My whole life and perspective on the world has totally changed. Wow. Well, that is so amazing. I just, oh my gosh, (laughs) (laughs) that is so amazing. And I'm just thinking just of all the people that I can't wait to send this episode to. (laughs) Good. Because I just think that like, so often we get caught up in like, like you said, like material things or, um, just Utah culture, how Utah culture can be. And, um, there's just, there is hard questions that we, we don't know the answers to, but that's not what this is all about. This is all about something so much deeper and you just completely embody that. And it's just so amazing. And your story is just so incredible. Um, I have a couple questions for you. Yeah. Um, if you're okay to answer, sure. If not, then we can <laughs> cut it out and we don't have to include it. So, <laughs> okay. um, so where is your, so how is it with your husband? Is he still kind of not back in the church is he and like what has that dynamic been has that been something that's been challenging for you like what's that yeah um so he he will go to church occasionally um he definitely still has questions and is not we're not on the same page with church but it like he I feel like we're both just respectful of each other's opinions and I think like me going through this whole journey. Um, Another reason I'm grateful that I was able to experience having all the questions and not having the church in my life. It's made me like see everything in a different perspective. Like I, I know that you can't force things on people. Like how many years was I not going to church? And I had so many nice people, like in the nicest way, asking me to go to church or all these things but it didn't do anything until I wanted to make that choice, you know? And so I think having that perspective helps me be respectful of like, well, I want to go to church and Cole's respectful of me going to church, but I know that maybe this just isn't for him and that's fine. Like me getting upset or like asking him to go every single week is not going to help. And I know that from my own experience. And so I feel like that's been, a good thing for us is he's super supportive of me going and I take your kids to church every week and he's totally fine with that. So it's, it's been fine for us. And I know it's not that way for everyone. And 
I feel bad because that would be really hard, especially when, I mean, at least the way I feel, and it's like a true conversion. It's like, you just want to do everything you can to be the best member of the church that you can to just love your heavenly father and do everything that he wants. And if your spouse like has different opinions on that, it, it can be conflicting. Like, how do I do this, but still keep my relationship in a good place, you know? So I am grateful because it's, it has been, it's been fine for us. And he, I do feel like I actually talked to him about this before. I'm like, what can I like, what are you good with me saying or whatever? And he's like, I just tell the truth, it's just how it is. And um, I don't know if you've seen the show, The Chosen. I, I've watched the first couple episodes, but I will tell you that my husband is literally obsessed, like number one fan. <laughs> uh, so is Cole. I was just going to say, really? I, yes, we love oh. it so much. I, so I actually binge watched the first two seasons just by myself. Cause I do feel like it's a little bit on eggshells talking about religion. Cause I don't want him to feel like I'm pushing anything on him. So I just like would watch the little episodes on my phone <laughs> at first. So I'm like, I don't want to like make him feel like I'm sneaking this little message yeah. into you, right. you know? Yeah. So I watched it and I was like blown away by it. Like I, you know, get into it with your husband about being the number one fan. Cause I, I know you're <laughs> making me think, wow, I, I'm not like a huge TV watcher and he is. And yeah. so like just in, in at night and stuff like I just don't watch tv like he does but you're at what with what he's told me and with what you're telling me I'm like maybe I should start watching tv a little bit more okay well I'm like you I don't watch tv like I at night I'm like I want to read all my books this is like my time to uh-huh. do what I want I don't want to watch tv so I really don't either but this like I tell everyone about it it is so good and I think it is like strengthened his testimony in Christ. Like I do feel like he has been softened in that way to like, he wants to be more like Christ and learn more about Christ. I don't want to like say the show has done all these things. It's just a show, but the way that they portray everything and it just makes, it just makes you love Jesus more. Like to see that he was a real person and had real, things going on like it was hard for him you know and it's just it it's so good it is worth watching and I I feel like that show has like made me desire even more to just learn more about him and really read the stories about his mission here on earth and it's just so good and so that's been a fun thing for us to do together that is not like specifically church related but it's very spiritual and it's just it's so good so she has like I'm know, watching it do it it is good it, you won't regret it, I promise that's awesome so <laughs> it's interesting that you say that because I had this like I talked about it in another episode at one point but I have people in my family that are obviously siblings that I'm very close to and I had a similar feeling of like well, at first I'm like, okay, I really want them to listen to the podcast. Like, I really think this could help them, you know? Mm -hmm. And, and then I had this dream one night and I don't even remember like the whole dream, but in the dream, it was like very clear to me that what they're going through is exactly like their whole life and their experience is exactly what they're going through to prepare them for who they are meant to be. And we can't sit here and judge anyone else for where they're at, because like you said, you're grateful for your time that you were away because you realize how grateful you are to have that void filled now. And you can tell the difference, like Mm -hmm. you can see the difference in your life. And it's the same thing for me in my experience. Like I can completely relate to feeling like, you know, people, I was the, if you've heard my episode, you know, I was the farthest thing from like being like a cookie cutter (laughs) member of the church. And, um, and like, it's crazy to say that, like, because I mean, obviously I caused a lot of pain to people in my family and it was 
really a horrible thing to have to go through, but I'm grateful that I went through it. Like as bad and horrible as it was, I think my parents are grateful too, because we all made it through this really challenging thing. And the spiritual lessons that were learned from that were worth the trial to go Mm -hmm. through it and get there. And so I think that, you know, obviously we want, we love the church and we love the gospel so much and we want other people to feel what we feel because it means so much to us, Mm -hmm. but, and it can be challenging to like, take a step back and be like, Hey, they are going like, this is their, you know, like people have their journey and their path. And that is what shapes them to be who they're meant to be. I just, I love that you said that so much because, and I love that you are in a place where you're like, Hey, I respect you for your journey and where you're at. And like, I just, I think that's amazing. (laughs) So. Oh, thanks. And I, I think you just totally hit the nail on the head with it's, it is hard when you like do have that like true conversion or you're in that place where you're like, I, I'm not doing this to push this on you. It's because I love you. And this is so, this has changed my life so much. And I want this for you. And so, but the person on the receiving end doesn't always feel that way. And so I've had to like take steps back and I remind myself all the time because I, I do love my husband so much. And I, I don't want to like portray this message. Like, I know you're not happy and I wasn't happy before. And now I'm happy. Like I've always been happy, but this having this in my life, it's just like a deeper purpose and deeper gratitude and deeper love for everything. And it's, it's exactly like you said, these people that you love so much and you just want that for them too. And now looking back, I'm like all these people, all those years ago, that's all they wanted for me too. And I just wasn't in the right mindset, you know, Mm -hmm. um, that I can't remember where I heard this person, whoever said it was like, your job is not to tell them what to do or what they need to do to do X, Y, and Z. Like your job is to love them. Mm -hmm. And that just meant so much to me. I'm like, you're right. That my job is to love everyone and to serve others. And that's my job. Like my job is not to make all these things happen. That's like the Lord has his own plan and his own timing. And I've seen that in my life, how timing is truly everything. Like things do or don't happen for a reason. Mm -hmm. And so I try to remember that all the time. Like that is not my job. My job is to love and to be a good example and to serve and to do what I can to help others. And I wish I could remember, I need to get better at taking notes on all the things I listened to, but that just really stuck with me, that comment. Yeah. Um, one book that I read several years ago was the power of everyday missionaries. And anyway, that kind of reminded me of it and it's a really good book, but, um, So I was just thinking about your neighbors that you loved so much and how you said they weren't like saying they weren't pushing church things on you. And it was exactly what you needed. And Mm -hmm. I just, I think that is a huge lesson to all of us that, you know, people, a lot of people listening to this podcast, they, you know, probably have seen a lot of people close to them leave and they maybe seeing other people leave, it like starts some questions inside of them. And so, you know, they're seeking answers and maybe they find the answers and then they feel really converted and happy and they want to talk to the people that have left, or maybe they just want to try to understand more. But I think personally for me, one of the things that I've really learned is that exactly what you just said, that the best thing we can do is love them and be an example. I mean, and it's not even like be an example, like, oh, it's just be that person, be your neighbor, the neighbor Mm -hmm. that was just loving you for where you were at. And you were just like, dang, there is something special about these people. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I probably could guess that that's the light of Christ just radiating from this family that just showed you so much love and kindness. And 
loving you for exactly where you're at and not trying to change where you're at and not trying to push you in one direction or the other. And, but just being there for you and loving you right there. And so anyway, I think this is just such a great lesson to all of us on how we can best interact with people that walk away from the church or yeah. Yeah. Um, you just said something about, um, missionaries and, um, I actually listened to your episode when you were talking with your husband and I, which was so good. You guys just have the coolest stories and you're so impressive and admirable. And I love it so much. Well, thank um, you. And I feel the same way about you. So oh, thanks. Um, but your husband, I, I feel like he mentioned a few times that he just loved his mission and really like wanted to finish his mission. I just kept having the thought because I feel like I've heard that a couple times just here and there. And my perspective is like, we're always on a mission. Like you guys doing this podcast and sharing your story and others' story, like that is missionary work. That is, you never know who is listening and who needs to hear the message that you're sharing and to see like the strength and the things that you guys have gone through and you still like are just thriving. Like that is, that is the light of Christ. And you guys are being missionaries. And my neighbors were missionaries to me. They weren't like on a mission, but they were missionaries to me and they changed my life. And so I like to share that with people because I think we forget that just being a good person, like that's just being like Christ. That is all we have to do. Just love others. And you just never know when the person like me is observing and is just like, what, like, what do I need to do to get there? You know, you never know where people are at. And, um, so I just, I kept thinking that when your husband kept saying that, it's like, you are still on an amazing mission. Like you guys are doing amazing things and it's so cool. And so I just, I feel like we're always, you know, kind of on a mission, just doing what we can to be good. You know, I love that so much. Well, um, we are at overtime, but I have a question for you and it's, did you find out what the seizure, like what caused? Oh, yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. I meant to come back to that because that was another like little miracle thing. But so I went to the neurologist a few days after the seizure happened and they did a bunch of tests and I had to wait a few weeks and they did like these sleep tests and all these things that took forever. But I finally found out that I was actually having like partial seizures my entire life. And I just didn't know it. They were just like these partial things where I would never like lose consciousness, but like enough that I could explain to my doctor, like I would have these little episodes where I just felt kind of like weird and almost like a deja vu feeling. And she's like, yeah, those are partial seizures. I'm like, oh, well, I remember having one when I was like five. So I've been having these my whole life. So the reason I feel like that was another timed thing is like, what are the chances I go 29 years? That's how old I was when I had the seizure. 29 years without having a seizure like that. And I have one right at that time. What in the world like that? And I haven't had one since I've only had the one. And so to me, that was another thing that was like, that is just, that is not a coincidence. Yeah, that is not a coincidence. No. And so that was, sorry, I meant to come back to that, but yeah, it was, okay. that was another thing that just was like, what in the world? 29 years of having these little partial seizures and I never have one until right now. That is just crazy and never have one since so far. I mean, it's only been a few years, but man, that was another little, little thing that I'm like that there's no coincidences. Yep. And it's right after you said that prayer, I, I'm, I know we need to wrap up, but really quick, one thing that I noticed in that is in common with a lot of episodes is that the turning point for somebody starts when they say a prayer it starts with yes. the prayer. and it's like that that act of just being willing to have the faith to ask mm-hmm. it like opens these doors and heavenly father like sees you exercising that faith to ask and then he just delivers and it's so awesome to see. I totally agree I totally agree and 
I've thought that about my own story. And like you said, I, I feel like that is a common theme where it's like my, <clears throat> excuse me, my heart was not totally softened by any means. And I still was like on the fence, but I was in that place where my heart was just a little bit softened. And I was willing to open my heart and my mind, like just that little tiny bit. And like you said, just having that little act of faith to even say a prayer is enough for Heavenly Father to be like, that's all I need. Like just effort. He just loves effort. Mm -hmm. And um, so I totally agree. I think that is such a common theme to just show a little act of faith and he will just open all the doors. Yes. I love that. Well, thank you so much for being on the podcast. This was seriously one of my favorite episodes that I've done so far. So thank thank you. you. Thank you for this opportunity. Of course.